This engine is a 383. Previously on Shop Farming Garage, of course, it was not born a 383. Let's just uh, start tearing into this. This is what this engine or this intake looks like, you know, without the runner. But the angle of these bolts right here is like this, where the angle of these is a little bit off. Not even stuck. Not really. The spider bracket is what I call it. It holds these uh, little little brackets in the plate. You can see all the crosshatch. I mean, to me, these rods are a work of art. It's a beautiful thing that nobody will ever see. Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Foreman Garage. Today we are working on the Dragon Drive car and we are gonna to have to pull the interior out of this thing. I know interiors, they're fun, right? But it's gotta get done. Um, if you haven't seen any part of this series, I will put a link right up here in the top. You can go back, watch from the beginning, uh, see what all we're doing with this car and all the plans we have. The plans we have today is uh, tackling this interior and uh, just getting it out of there. You know, hopefully the entire dashboard and uh, just a uh, update on the engine. Uh, I did uh, send the cylinder heads out to the, that uh, speed shop, the machine shop. Um, it's called Samson Racing Engines. I did meet the owner, um, Dylan Samsung. He's a really, really nice guy. And he's going to let us take a tour of the place. They do have a dyno. It's not a car dyno. It's an engine dyno. But we can get this thing together. We can put it on a dyno and see what all it has and what tweaking we need to do before we even get in the vehicle. That would be really cool. But right now, the cylinder heads are over there. And they are um, porting the heads for me. And... Um, it's, uh, I'll let you know uh, when that comes back or uh, what we need to do, if we need to do anything with them. So uh, let's get on to this thing right here. Okay, let's see what we gotta do. We have to remove a lot of stuff. And we got this big speaker box here. And <clears throat> I can tell you for sure this box will not come out of this doorway unless we take the t-tops off and as you can see it moving the thing in and out you know over the years has uh you know done some trim damage there you know kids you know gotta have their boom boom box and don't care about what damage it does getting it in i guess that was a long long time ago um but uh if you see this weather strip um I mean, it's definitely going to need some work. This right here, this is gone. I mean, this is just completely rotted. Well, just dried out. So all this needs to be replaced. This belt molding, oh my God, it's, yeah, it's definitely gone. It needs to be replaced. And <clears throat> from what I remember up here in the top, uh, years ago, they started to rust, you know, right in here. And this, these T-tops haven't been off in a long time. As a matter of fact, I guarantee you the last time these tops were off was when this box right here was going in there. Um, we're gonna have to take the T-tops off and look at that too. And I believe that all these weather strippings and stuff, they're, they're gonna have to be replaced. These were replaced at the factory or at, um, at the dealership uh, not too long after the vehicle was bought. Uh, the T-tops were leaking, took it back to the dealership had them uh they replaced all the seals matter of fact there used to be a um 
a bulletin on um, proper replacement of these seals because they had problems leaking. And then of course, once we got it back from the dealership, it was still leaking and we took it back and then we got it back, it was still leaking, we took it back. It was one of those things back and forth, you know, till it finally got to a point where, you know, why, why even bother? You know, they're never gonna, they're never gonna seal completely. And you know, you know that, you know, you got any kind of a, a roof, um, a removable roof, it's gonna leak. There's just no way about it. Um, so let's start taking this apart. One of the problems that I have, well, that I'm gonna run into, I guess, is uh, I need to, um, I mean, once we get the interior out, I want to um, start installing that, um, the roll cage. And the specification of the roll cage is whenever you're sitting in here and you have your helmet on, the um, bar on the top, the loop, shouldn't be any more than like six inches from the back of your helmet or something like that in order to know that you have to take measurements with the seat in and with somebody sitting here and the problem is i'm pretty sure i'm not going to go back with these seats so it wouldn't make any difference to take some measurements right now um, and then once the seat is in we're pulling the steering column out so you know, you need to know where the seat position is going to be with the steering, you know. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to have to deal with that, you know, when the time comes. Um, so as for right now, just uh, get all this interior out and, you know, see, see what we find. Um, um, yeah, let's just do that right now. I'm just getting some of this junk out of here. Um, look what I found. Well, I got the original owner's manual. Firebird 89 Pontiac owner's manual. And um, some other information. I've been throwing a bunch of stuff out of here. Blockbuster, Blockbuster video card. Anybody need a, you know, go rent a movie? And Hot Rod Power Club. Club member, founding member, nominee 1999. I have no idea what this is. The Hot Rod Power Club. If any of y'all know what that is, you know, give me, run around down in the comments. Let me know if you've seen this. I have no idea what it is. Look at this. This is really cool and course I tore the thing but um, it says the um, added items 20 270 dollars added items so the net total price of this car back in 1989 was fifteen thousand five hundred forty two dollars I got it right there so that's kind of cool. Anyway, I guess uh, the first thing I should probably do is get this speaker box out of here. Get these T-tops off. See what kind of damage is up there that we're gonna have to deal with. And um, just move them there, from there, pull the seats out. Um, these seats are not, uh, I'm not planning on going back with these seats. Um, and the seat risers or seat um, tracks, uh, I might go with different seat tracks too, so I don't know exactly what the height is gonna be anyway. So we'll just uh, take them out and uh, just deal with what we can while, we, while we're there, you know, while we're crossing that, you know, crossing that bridge, you know. Um, so let's start taking this apart. Look at this. That is definitely rotten. And I knew that it was like that. Don't know how deep it goes. But definitely on the top right here. And 
we see it on the other side. So this is definitely gonna have to be replaced. There's a pretty good dent right there in this crossbar. This crossbar's got some wear in it too. We may end up replacing this whole thing. We're gonna have to get into this, tear this out, pull these seals, see how bad it is on the inside. If it's rotten and rusted in there, we're gonna probably have to replace this bar. I think I wanna replace it anyway. So um, I think they make a stainless steel bar um, I will find out, but let's get all this stuff out of here. Let's see what this looks like oh, without the speaker box in here. Got all this wiring and everything. Hmm. Some sand. Not bad. Not bad at all, really. That's not good. The entire rear glass just fell. Um, some sand in here too. Uh, let's see. So I guess these these hatches aren't as strong as they were before. But of course, whenever I started it up or opened it up outside. Uh, it was really hot in here and that helps that helps uh, push these things up so uh, close it down for now and one thing that we never tested i wish we would have tested before i took the battery out is this thing automatic it's an automatic close system it latches on to the thing there and it draws it down and uh should have tested that before the battery was pulled out of there so, too late now. Um, another thing is <clears throat> I need to get these windows up. And the other window is like halfway up or three quarters of the way down, whatever. Um, but I'm gonna have to pull this vehicle outside at some point. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get these windows up seeing that I got no electric electronicals going on. So I'll figure that out. Um, probably gonna pull the door panels and just uh, hot wire the, um, the motor, the window motor. And um, let's get to tearing this interior out.
nothing in here. There's nothing holding this. I mean, this. This thing right here, it, <clears throat> it's completely gone. I mean, it's uh, typical, typical for these um, vehicles that that would happen. And um, it has definitely happened to this vehicle. And uh, this is gonna have to be replaced. If we want this to be able to hold anything. <clears throat> now, let me get all this out of the way here. Oh no, that's broken too. The mirror button is broken. Hmm, okay. Well, I don't know if we're gonna go back with this audio unit. Maybe, I mean, it's a good audio unit, I guess. Um, it's got new speakers all around because I found the, the original speaker connectors which means those are cut off for the aftermarket speaker. But uh, we're not, as far as I know, we're not gonna be going back with this right here. We're gonna have a new AC unit um, that has, actually has electronic actuators. This thing uses vacuum actuators and um, the vacuum switch in here has had issues where um, no matter what you do, um, the air is always either blowing on the bottom or blowing on the top or, or, or something like that. Um, intermittent, intermittently. Um, but uh, we're gonna go back with a different AC unit that's gonna have a control head that looks similar to this to, to uh, stay with uh, you know the, the same look but it's going to be a, a completely different system. I think it's called um, Classic AC or Vintage AC, something like that. I'll, I'll find out. I'll let you know. But, okay, I got this out. So i take this whole center console out, and I'm going to have some problems with this, getting this thing open, because I know there's a, the spring in the back is just jammed. So let's get to that. You can see this thing has seen better times that's for sure that glue is kind of sticky right there but uh, these switches <clears throat> um, I've always hated the way this mirror switch connects right there and then of course the button itself has come out so that's probably going to have to be replaced if I can find something like that uh, it's got this little switch in the back it's got a little light that's pretty cool for for the um, little glove box right here center console box whatever you call it <clears throat> so uh, let me figure out how to get this thing off get this center console out of here
okay this thing is fighting me you know uh so just just so you can see there's two vacuum hoses right here and i be i think that this uh, basically turns vacuum on this switch right here i think not exactly sure we got all these vacuum hoses going right here and this transfers vacuum from one hose to another and that's what sets up your vacuum actuators and makes the doors open and close we're not going to need any of this stuff because we're going back with a different system but i don't want to just cut it out i'd rather just take it all apart and leave it whole for now so uh, let me just fight with this and get this thing off there's one stud and a bolt way way down in there way down in there i gotta get that nut off uh, you can see yeah there it is right there we'll get that nut off and we can get this thing out this is uh we'll talk about this in a second Okay, this is what we're looking at here. This thing has been, <clears throat> you know, I mean, they do that. The thing comes off of there and uh, it has been re-glued a couple times. Um, but everything that goes right here on both sides is completely gone. It's supposed to have brackets coming out here to hold your audio unit and stuff. And the thing has had a couple different audio units in it. Um, so it's been in and out and in and out. Um, not this, but the, um, the audio units. And you can see how it's, it's taken some wear. And I mean, it was coming apart to begin with. Uh, so these are a hot item trying to get something like this. Everybody wants it, you know, so kind of hard to find. Uh, this stud right here had a nut on it it was holding on to the bottom of this thing right back here and that thing was on it was on good but i finally got it off of there and of course this thing you can see the back right there that's where all those vacuum lines go and right here on this side like right here and right here uh, where this thing connects that's what connects to it it's got these little pound nuts you know that they go on there that's what i call them pound nuts there's two of them so you had to uh, take those things off in order to slide those that out of there um so at least you know now we got all this down and uh we can start taking the dash apart um yeah i don't know i don't know where to start with this thing um pull the column down so we can get the dash pad off probably start with the dash pad definitely got to get off everything underneath there got to get this cluster out and all this trim that's all has to come out in order to pull the dash out so <clears throat> let's get started
Oh, look at this gigantic mess underneath here. Um, there are switches and lights and other toggle switch. I don't even know what all this is for anymore. Um, and look at all this. Look at that mess right there. We got alarm systems. We got relays. More relays. You know, it uh, has a bunch to do with, you know, don't steal me stuff but I mean god this has all got to go what a big mess I think that's a door lock relay pretty sure that's a door lock relay it does have power door locks and I believe this was a remote start audio uh, alarm system um, so you could remote start uh, which means there's been a bypass uh, somewhere in here so this this key right here I can turn the key off this key has a chip right there in the key and there's a certain resistance in this chip when you stick the key in it reads that resistance and if it's the correct resistance then it'll allow it to start start it's a uh, passive anti-theft system is uh, what um, GM called it a patch system um, and this has a bypass it has to have had the bypass because it has a remote start um, alarm system so in order to remote start it without having the key in it you have to bypass that which with these if you have the key you know it's no problem just you know you know ohm that out and find out what the resistance is and then put a resistor in place you know at the patch system so it'll think that the key's in there all the time. Um, it's weird that you gotta bypass the anti-theft in order to put an anti-theft system in. But um, yeah, if you want a remote start, that's what you gotta do. And this, it's more than remote start. It's a bunch of, bunch of junk there. So gotta get rid of all that. Figure out how to take this dashboard out um, with all this wiring and everything going on. And uh, I'm, I, no, I don't have uh, very good lighting. It's, and it's, it's a rainy day today too. So um, I'm just gonna, you know, film the best I can, uh, pulling all this stuff out. And um, we'll see, see how much I can get out without breaking. So let's get to it. Okay, this is what I'm dealing with here. I got the dash loose. Here's the ECM. Um, I got a bunch of wiring that's still attached to the dash that I'm gonna have to take off. Um, <laughs> yeah. And probably a lot more on the other side. And uh, that's it. This There is no carrier assembly. I mean, the dashboard is the carrier assembly. It's all ma mainly plastic. Um, you know, with the exception of this 
metal beam down here below. Um, so uh, it's just a matter of figuring out how to get all this wiring off and then I can just pull the dashboard out. So I'll just go through it and figure it out. Okay, this is where we are. I got the dashboard out and this harness went all along the inside of the dashboard. It did come apart over there, but there are no connectors right here. And um, I started to take some of this stuff off, ignition switch, all this junk, um, which I'm gonna have to take all, I'm gonna have to go through this entire hour. This is a, what a nightmare, you know? I mean, it's, it's funny cause I don't, I, I've pulled plenty of these dashboards out in the day, um, but uh, I don't remember it being so hard. Well, it's actually not funny. It's, it's a nightmare is what it is. Uh, it's not like the dashboards, you know, of nowadays where you just got a couple connectors on this side, a couple connectors on that side, take off some uh, bolts and some screws and the entire dashboard slides down and comes right out. Um, like they're meant to be, you know, the whole carrier assembly dash and harness, everything you can take all out at the same time. Um, not these old ones, um, but, and let me show you, let me show you the dash. Here's the dash right here. And I actually had to take this AC ducting off of it. And this is the back of it. Here's where the steering column rides. And the harness just came inside here and it went all along and went underneath this bracket right here too and all along down here. And there's a module right here with stuff to unplug. I, I don't even know what this module is. I'm gonna have to find out because this uh, ducting and all this is going to be um, it's going to be modified for the new AC system but the dashboard is out and now we can move on kind of move some of this junk out of the way and move on to that AC unit pull the AC unit pull the carpet that's the idea uh, this is this is going to be another nightmare I'm sure but let's get going. So the inner and outer AC unit is out. The refresh, recycle door, that's out. Um, and all this, this all looks good. 
Um, we're definitely pulling the carpet, but all this matting here, it's not all messed up. It's not like mice got to it or anything. But um, this right over here, this, oh man, it reeks so bad. All of this nastiness all down here. Oh my God, it's so nasty. But we finally got this whole thing off and this is the way that I plan on keeping it so this is flat without all the stuff coming out into here so we get a, a nicer bigger um, engine compartment area uh, more room for headers and stuff this pipe right here this is probably going to go away uh, so now let's start getting all this everything out of here um, <laughs> and I, t you know, it looks like a bigger mess than it was before. You know, we took a mess and we made it into a different kind of bigger mess. Um, and all that wiring and everything. And if you look at all that, if you look at all that in there, it just, it's intimidating. You know, it's like, what have I done? Oh my God, there's just wiring everywhere. Where does all this stuff go? And the thing is, we're not going to put it back the way it was. We got to figure it out. Um, there was one harness right here, this blue harness, that actually goes through this thing and it goes down under the carpet there. I have no idea what it is. It didn't have a connector. It was connected to that wiring harness on the other side. So I just cut it. I don't know what it is. I guess we're going to pull this carpet out and we're going to find out what that thing went to. But uh, you know, all these tools out of here, try and clean this up so I'm not making a bigger mess, pouring this junk out everywhere and just start pilling the carpet. We're gonna have to, um, I gotta figure out how to take that rear seat out because I don't know. And we gotta get the trim panels off the sides, these uh, seal trims, all this stuff. Uh, these seat belts, I do not plan on using these seat belts anymore. Um, so because uh, we're going to go with the uh, roll cage and then we'll have a five point harness for the drivers and passenger I don't think there's going to be any room for uh, anyone in the rear seat I don't think we're even going to use the rear seat anymore we'll see we'll see what it looks like um, but uh, yeah let's, let's just start taking all this stuff out
Time for a recap. So we got the carpet out and <clears throat> the floor is, you know, in, in beautiful shape. It's absolutely, you know, perfect, practically. Um, that is not rust. That's actually a, a sound barrier. So it's attached to this stuff right here. And of course it is, does have T-tops and they did leak, you know, and um, li it likes to make stuff attach, you know, but uh, they, these are just uh, sound barriers um, that are it's got this stuff attached, this jute or whatever attached to it. But um, pretty much all around, um, the floors are magnificent. Um, and of course we got the AC unit out and the dashboard completely out. Did not do the carpet in the rear. We will do that. We found that this thing is all rusted up here. We're gonna have to take care of that. Probably replace all of these seals, all of them, just like every single thing. So I'm gonna have to find that. I'm gonna have to get some, um, some parts, order some parts, look up parts, see where I can find stuff. This harness right here, we're probably not gonna use at all. This goes to the uh, ECM. This is all computer control stuff that was in the vehicle that we're not gonna use anymore. So this entire harness may go, except for this. That's the auto magical antenna. So, um, and it turns out this wire that I cut right here, it runs along over here and it comes up over here and it goes to the rear speaker. So <clears throat> yeah, I'll deal with that some someday. Got this AC unit out. This is looking really good. Got to clean all this junk out of this. <coughs> oh man, it, it's nasty. It stinks really bad. And then here on the other side, this is pretty much the same thing. It's just stuck to a to a um, sound barrier. And there's a lot of dirt and stuff under here, but not really any rust and it is solid good foundation for sure and most of this harness is gonna go um, most of it i threw all this around here it's all sitting up here of course you know there's a lot of stuff we definitely need to keep um, and i'll have to go through that and try and figure out what is what and where stuff goes and that's this harness coming through right here they can be separated right here at the bulkhead <clears throat> so that's what i have to do next time i guess uh, we'll dip into this depending on the parts i get and stuff for the interior but of course that roll cage we need to do the roll cage so just a, a quick update on the engine the um the heads, uh, I sent them out to the uh, speed shop, uh, machine shop, and they are getting uh, worked on. As a matter of fact, um, I talked to the owner, Dylan, really nice guy. And he said we could do a tour, you know, no matter what, and, you know, so that's cool. Uh, one day uh, we'll figure that out. Um, also, he, uh, let, he told me to leave the valves in and I left the valves in it and the springs and everything like that. He says whenever they uh, port heads, they always do valve jobs. So he's gonna go through it. I talked to him about the little wear on the uh, ends of the valves. And he said that, uh, yeah, they're supposed to be turning. And uh, maybe the way that those springs seat in that head, they might be too tight and not letting it turn. So uh, he's gonna uh, check on that too. He asked me about the valve spring. We're gonna go back with the same ones. I don't know because we're gonna put a different cam in and depending on the cam you put in, depends on the size of the valve springs that you put in there. So I need to figure that out before he's done um, because if we're gonna go with bigger valve springs, he's gonna have to machine ahead to make them fit possibly. Uh, so uh, all that uh, we'll have to deal with. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get, you know, do, do some research, you know, get on the Google web and uh, try and figure some stuff out to find some parts and everything like that. Uh, if y'all are wondering what this is right here, uh, this is basically my bolt uh, categorizing system um, so i got all the bolts and everything so i know where they go i got uh, these little baggies 
I stick them in, stick them in different locations. I put a note on them so I know where these bolts are, what they're for. Some bolts we're gonna use, some bolts we might not, but I don't wanna lose them. So uh, that's just the best way I could figure out how to do it. <clears throat> so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you like this kind of content, man, like it and, you know, share it, share it with people. And, and if you uh, click that thumbs up, it, it allows the video to go out to other people who might like watching something like this. And I know it's interior is kind of boring, you know, but we're doing the whole car, you know, so you got to do interior sometime. And uh, I am anxious to get onto that, that, uh, that roll cage, uh, but the 110 Lincoln uh, welder that I have, it just ain't gonna, it ain't gonna handle it. I need to buy a new welder, and I don't have any body um, type uh, tools and stuff like that, so I'm gonna have to get some sanders, some grinders, uh, and we'll see. And I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. I'll see you in the next one.